time. All right. So take it away, Doug. Okay. Um, yeah. So seven years ago, Did I... uh, Colleen and I went on one of our most ambitious trips where we went down to Mexico uh, to explore the Yucatan Peninsula and then um, traveled through Belize and as well Guatemala. Um, in this trip here, we were gone for 55 days um, and we did it on quite the budget. Um, our motto of this trip was budget. be travelers, not tourists. Um, so it's like true backpacking style. Um, and our backpacks were small. Right, we, uh, we did this with like small day packs. Um, we've done previous trips to Central America before um, so we kind of knew what we needed to bring and what we didn't. Um, so we packed super light. Um, and yeah, we have a slideshow with some pictures here and we'll kind of play that and then pause it and talk about talk different and, places we went. Yeah, tell stories as we go. Yeah. So I think we'll begin. And hopefully the picture is clear for everyone. Um, but yeah, so we started, we flew into Cancun. Um, Plane tickets to Cancun are usually fairly cheap and we figured that was a good jumping off spot. So we started in Cancun and then traveled south uh, to Playa del Carmen and that's that's kind of where that we began. Where we started. And we mainly you took buses and well from the in Mexico we were mainly on the buses, the traveler buses, the, the chicken buses and the first night in Playa we just picked a random hostel. That's oh, not now, is that and the now hostel? Yeah. Uh, no, now uh, the hostel that we stayed in was right by this ruin. Yeah, so these, uh, these are the ruins of Tulum, um, which are unique in that they're right on the coast. Um, really beautiful spot. Have any of you been there? And uh, Tulum actually means the place of the dawning sun. And um, yeah, and I guess I should say that it's like a, it's like a two hour trip from Cancun to Tulum. Um, it took us much longer than that. But, uh, but anyway, so these are the ruins of Tulum. Um, really beautiful place. I'm sorry, what year did you say this was? 2014. Yep. Wow, and my cool. my family was pretty convinced we were going to come back married. Just throw that fact in too. So they and, so they were disappointed. <laughs> no, they weren't. <laughs> they wanted to be there. Okay. So these are the beaches of Tulum, which are really nice. Um, and we actually went back to Tulum two years ago, and it's unfortunately changed quite a bit. It's very built up and developed. Um, but it's still, still a really beautiful place. But so from Tulum, um, we traveled south to Laguna Bacalar, which um, is the second largest lake in Mexico. And it translates to the Lake of Seven Colors. Um, this is our hostel. Yeah, and this is the hostel we stayed at called Casa China. Um, and that was how we stayed at the beginning, our shoestring budget by staying in hostels. Right, lots of hostels uh, for like very- yeah, very affordable prices. Um, and yeah, we went and saw some cenotes in the area. Um, that was Cenote Azul. Um, and so there's lots of cenotes around the Yucatan and a cenote is really just a, it's like a sinkhole in the limestone that can be either like the size of a pond or it can be caves underground. Um, yeah, so this is more of Laguna Bacalar. And then this is, Chetumal, which is the border town where we crossed into Belize. Into Belize. Um, and once we got into Belize, we went to a town of Corozal, which was a really cool town. We fell in love with it and ended up staying there for a few days. Um, we again stayed at a nice little hostel with gardens. We were able to pick fruit to eat. Um, and yeah, I went to a lot of the, the street markets and... That's where we got a lot of our food. And I think this is where 
we went to the tortilla factory and saw um, the pasta. Yeah, that's exactly what this is right here. Yeah, so got to go to the tortilla factory. And we honestly ate tortillas with every meal. Um, we did lots of tortillas and peanut butter, lots of tortillas and uh, cans of smoked tuna that we fell in love with down there. I wish that existed up here. Um, so yeah, so it was cool to go to the tortilla factory. Um, this is still in Corozal, a small coastal town. And then we traveled south to uh, Hopkins, Belize. And this is where our working vacation started. Yeah, we um, so checked into this hostel uh, and the first night we were there, I noticed some guys moving furniture and kind of lumber and stuff around. So I offered to help and they're building some new rooms and some new dorms. Um, and so I offered to help and they hired me on the spot. So I started doing some carpentry stuff with them. Um, in turn for- In turn for free, free room or free bed. And board. Yeah. Um, but it really wasn't a great deal because we got no, we uh, the no. beds were like 12 bucks, 12 bucks a night. And, uh, and so I was working for like $12 a day. But it was a great yeah. experience. We did the math when we put this together. <laughs> um, so yeah, and the hostel we stayed at was called the Funky Dodo. Um, it's still there. Yeah, and we met um, a bunch of other travelers from kind of all over. And here I am doing some construction in, in one of the new rooms. Um, we built beds, finished a room off, um, did. did some painting. I hope you guys can see, the, see these pictures clearly. What did Colleen do during the day while you were working? Or did she work too? <laughs> I took a lot of walks and <laughs> that's, that's a reading on the beach i did a lot of reading on the beach and i also helped paint and i made sure he was fed that's true <laughs> yeah um so is that did we get out of order i don't know are we at the waterfall yes is that a waterfall oh yeah right so just outside of hopkins uh we found this national park called mayflower bakwina and went there um, and it was pretty amazing. We had the place mostly to ourselves and, and did this incredible hike up to the top of that waterfall. Um, it, was not, it was our first waterfall of the trip. Right. And then, um, and as we were saying, as far as traveling on a budget, we did uh, a lot of like hitchhiking um, and a lot of walking. <laughs> so much walking. <laughs> and um, so that was a great trip and we're back in Hopkins at the Funky Dodo here. Um, some of the beds that I made for them. Can I jump in? I yeah. Question. So first of all, did you feel, you felt safe with, with everything and also um, hitchhiking? Well, um, yeah. Belize and Mexico, definitely. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we tried to kind of gauge the region where we were, um, but we did feel safe and honestly, um, we got picked up by a lot of other American travelers, which was yeah. cool. Um, and then also- Excited to see a couple of, you know, a couple of people doing their thing when they were young. And we also, uh, I mean, it was a great way to meet locals as well. Like when we we're hitchhiking around um, Bacalar Lake, we met this local who wanted to have us over for dinner and teach us Spanish. Um, so it, it worked out pretty well. We definitely tried to kind of gauge our surroundings and, and be safe about it. Um, but it was never really a concern. And like even in the hostels and places where we stayed, um, you know, it was, there were dorm room styles. So there'd be sometimes 20 people to a room and, and you, know, you, you could leave. And you had to trust that no one was gonna take your stuff. So. Right, you know, you kind of leave your belongings there. And, um, and you have to wear earplugs at night. Right, right. Yeah, so that's the other thing. That's the other traveling. funny thing is that, you know, we kind of realized on this trip that we might be getting a little older when, you know, some of these hostels have bars slash nightclubs next door and, and yeah, it gets kind of loud. Um, and we just so like two in the morning. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, so yeah, no, we, we we felt pretty safe, um, you know, most of the trip. Um, it wasn't really until we entered Guatemala where we had some kind of concerns but uh yeah no we yeah we felt safe most of the time um so let's continue here 
So yeah, oh, so this is a funny picture. So if you can tell where we slept, um, we had the- This spot right here. Yeah, so we had the bottom bunk of a bunk bed in the Together. dorm room with like 30 people and we shared that bed. So that's what we were getting paid for the, the labor that I was contributing. So again, might not have been the best deal, but we wouldn't change it for anything and it was a great experience. <laughs> And this is when we uh, we went to Dangria from Hopkins, which is a town just south on the coast. And we took an open skiff um, 12 miles out to Tobacco Key, which is a really small island um, out off the coast and went out there and, and stayed there for a couple nights. Um, absolutely beautiful spot. And our boat captain that brought us out there was an incredible host. and. Took us out snorkeling. Oh, um, uh oh, uh oh, oops. There you go. Are we still there? Oh, okay. yep. Sorry, sorry. I received a phone call. Tell me to um. So, anyways, yeah, in Tobacco Key, we went snorkeling. Um, our our boat captain took us out, and we were snorkeling while he was um, spear fishing and diving with us. Uh, caught us some dinner. Helped prepare it for us um yeah fish and conks and uh and yeah that's our cabana on the beach there and yeah so i was really intrigued and impressed by the boats down there um it was really cool. And so we ended up leaving the island early because this nasty storm was moving in on us. Um, and it got really rough and really nasty. And we got really soaked on the boat ride. Um, that was in the open skiff that you went back across? Yeah, 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 yeah 12 miles. Um, yeah. So then we uh, got back in the town of Dangria. Um, we spent, I think, in just a night there before traveling on. Um, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, so it's kind of more of the town of Dangria. Um, and then we traveled south to um, Punta Gorda. And from there, we went out to um, San Pedro. And this here is the Atkins. Atkinson's farm. Um, and so we went out there to do a woofing experience, which is uh, worldwide opportunities on organic farms. Oh, like Sandy Oliver. Yeah, right. So it's, uh, you can sign up and do it anywhere in the world. Um, you kind of pick your country um, and then get accepted. And then you can kind of scroll what the options are for you work. Have, you have to pay into it. It's, right, you pay to join. It's really inexpensive. And then they ask you not to share the information with anyone else because they want it to continue going. But um, I'll, I interrupted. I was That's gone for a second fine. and I'll let him continue. But the whooping opportunities are really amazing. You get to see really beautiful places. And the place we were was definitely one of them. Yeah, so this, um, you know, when we kind of, when we planned this trip, this was what it kind of revolved around. We found this this farm and this work opportunity. Um, and so signed up to go there and work for a couple of weeks. And then we just ended up traveling for like a month on each side of that working experience. So this year- I have a is, question, is an, sorry. What kind, of, yep. what kind of farm? Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. What kind of farm was it? So it wasn't so much of a farm. Um, the experience here was, was doing construction and working on this earth ship. Um, they did have, they did have lots of big gardens. Um, what else were they growing there? Uh, they had a like a banana farm and yeah. a pineapple orchard, I guess you would call it. Yeah. Uh, um, and then just like a regular uh, like veggie garden. Yeah. Um, and so I've done a little bit of green building and alternative construction out in California. So seeing this Earthship totally blew me away. Um, and so, yeah, so we went there to work on it. And Earthship, for those who aren't, who aren't clear, it's, uh, it's built mainly out of mud and bottles, um, tires, kind of all the above. Um, 
and this one is incredibly elaborate and uh, and there's quite a few pictures of it here but yeah so we worked on this farm here for two weeks did lots of cutting and cleaning bottles lots of packing mud lots of um different construction they had me build a a handrail and railing going up the stairs um which i learned doing construction down there working with that exotic hardwood is not easy on bits and blades and <laughs> stuff like that um but yeah and so we had our own cabana that we lived in while we we're working there on the farm um and it was right next door to these ruins called Lubantun um, that we could honestly walk a quarter mile down the road and go to these ruins that, um, you know, they weren't very popular. So we could go there and have the place all to ourselves. And, uh, and there's a butterfly farm uh, not too far away either that we were able to walk to one of our days and um, yeah, and just kind of explored around the area. But these ruins here at Lubantun were, were pretty amazing. Um, and like I said, we went there and would have the place to ourselves. So we went um, one night on a full moon and explored around, which was pretty incredible. Um, there, they were, uh, what did they do to them? Like when they were first discovered, they tried to um, like demolish them. So that's why they're all like crumbled up in pieces right. instead of stacked like other, um, ruins were mm -hmm. so yeah this is back of the earth ship where our job we did a lot of a lot of bottle cutting mm -hmm. um, like so the way they do hours. is they they cut the bottles in half clean them and then tape them together uh, so you're making like a bottle brick and then each side has the round end sticking out and then you stack those in the walls um, and that's how you make make your walls and structures out of the bottles um, then you I, have make another, I have another question. Yeah, go ahead. Is this somebody, so this is somebody's house? It, yeah. it is, well, so they had different plans with it. Um, so this was like next door to their house. And so they built this huge earth ship um, that they had talked about at one point being a hostel or a restaurant slash bar. Um, we actually got online just last week to kind of research and follow up on it and see where it's at. And it still isn't complete. They're still working on it, but it looks amazing. Um, so I'm not sure what so it's, old now. yeah, I'm not sure what it's going to, their plan is for it eventually. Um, like I said, they're still kind of working on it, but, but they really tried to incorporate a lot of the Mayan artwork um, and respect the Mayan culture. Um, I don't know if you saw that in some of the pictures, but they had, local artists come and do, you know, do carvings and do paintings and stuff like that. So it's just amazing. Um, and if you want to check it out, um, I think it's San Pedro, Guadal or Belize Earthship. Um, like you said, the family that owned it and lived there was the Atkinsons. So you should be able to and find it online. There. Yeah, um, still there. And like I said, we looked at some pictures. My hand railing that I built is still standing, which is nice. Um, <laughs> and yeah um so the woofing experience like i said that was kind of like the whole the whole main point of the trip and then we just kind of traveled on each side of that and we're pretty much just winging it everything beyond the woofing experience yeah. um, so we ended up leaving the farm and then traveled to uh placentia belize which was a little bit more touristy than what we yeah. where we had been and like in Hopkins but it's still beautiful and we we enjoyed being there um so there's just some pictures from Placencia it was a nice break after yeah after working on the farm and being back by the water was nice too mm -hmm. uh and then we only had like a like five or six days before we were leaving and that's when our adventure really began. Yeah, so we, <laughs> I think we met someone at a hostel, um, or I don't know how we decided, but we were like, let's let's go to Guatemala. Um, so like Colleen said, yeah, we had like five days left. So we ended up just packing, packing in this insane schedule to five days in Guatemala. Um, so traveled north, it, it was mainly in the northeast corner of Guatemala. Um, we went to 
the island of Flores, which is a, like a small city on this island in the middle of a lake. Um, it's like all like cobblestone streets, very old style. And in the middle of the city is this hostel called Los Amigos. That's just like this jungle paradise in the middle of the city. Um, and so that's, that's where we are right now, where we stayed. Um, and yeah, we, we fell in love with, with Flores. It was, it was pretty amazing. Um, and yeah, right on the lake. But we are not by any means Spanish speakers. So Guatemala was a lot more difficult and challenging than Belize. Right, so Belize is an English speaking country. Um, so I feel like when I've taken some Spanish and I felt like I was pretty good with my Spanish and then we went and spent all the time in Belize and didn't speak any Spanish. Then I went back to Guatemala and I felt pretty clueless. <laughs> um, and where we were in Guatemala, there's like no English speaking hardly at all. Um, and so that was a tuk-tuk, kind of our main means of travel around the city. Um, oh, this is where that's Flores. Yeah. The uh, lake that the island was on. And it's going in it on a swinging rope. <laughs> Beautiful and incredible like street markets, uh, lots of food. Um, yeah, and so from Flores, we were told we needed to go down to Rio Dulce, which is the river that's on the Belize and Guatemala border. Um, so we traveled down there and went to this hostel called the Backpackers Hostel that's right on the water um, and stayed there, which was pretty beautiful. Guatemala was also where we started seeing a lot of soldiers and ma the majority of them had like- It was like military. Yeah, machine guns. They would stop the buses that we were on and search them to make sure nobody had things that they needed that they weren't supposed to have. And so also from, um, Question from that you. town yes yeah, so what question yeah i was going to ask you when you mentioned before feeling a little dicey about guatemala it was the general citizenry that was making you uncomfortable right um kind of i mean kind of everything like so the there was an issue there's something some sort of conflict going on at with the at the border and so the first time we actually tried to go to Guatemala, the border was closed. Uh, they weren't letting anyone from Belize in and they like had vehicles parked, they're burning tires and kind of um, just took over the border and weren't letting anyone in. Um, and then, yeah, there was, as she said, like just a lot of police and military presence that was a little intimidating. I mean, like they would pull over the van or, or vehicle we're in and, and search through all of our bags, go through all of our stuff. Um, and there was definitely a language barrier. Yeah, right. And so that's the other thing. Um, not only do you get a little nervous when someone's kind of yelling at you in a foreign <laughs> language, but uh, you know, <laughs> really it's not, not really knowing what they're saying and what you're supposed to say. Um, so that, that was challenging at but times. But the locals were all very pleasant. And yeah. more like the other people who were traveling gave us a harder time, in my opinion, than yeah. the people who lived in Guatemala. Yeah. You mean the other uh, other gringos or Americans or or other um, Spanish speaking just, local? Not just Americans. No, not just. I mean, most. Yeah, not so much Americans, but like, um, I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, and you run into different issues when you're traveling. You know, with a group of people from all over the world, um, and you know, and and where there's you know limited seats on a bus or limited rooms at a hostel and stuff and I guess that you know I don't know we kind of joked about we're like nice guys finish last here I mean yeah, <laughs> yeah. like there was one time where we booked a, a shuttle um, and then someone took our seats and we had to wait a few hours for the next one yeah. um, or like we would get you know take a bus to a town and get to a town and people would be you know, running into the hostel to try to book rooms. I don't know. I mean, sometimes we joke that we're like, this is like the amazing race. And, and it really was. I mean, um, so some people were 
a little more rude than others. I won't say what country most of them are from, but anyways. Um, so yeah, so from, um, from Rio Dulce, we were told about these waterfalls. It's called El Paradiso, and it's actually a hot spring fed waterfall. So there's hot springs on top of these cliffs that are feeding the waterfalls. Um, and then on top there's this mud. That they apparently like bottle and sell and we got to go put on ourselves for free. <laughs> so yeah, that was just a nice little day trip to those waterfalls there. Very beautiful place. Um, that was from Rio Dulce. From Rio Dulce, yep. Um, and then from Rio Dulce, we traveled up north to the town of Lanquin, which is a small, like really small mountain village. Um, More hostile than local, definitely. Yeah, and um, and yeah, it was mainly we went there just, uh, it was the closest town to Semek Champé, which is a, like a park we wanted to go to and explore. So we stayed there for a night. And then early the next morning, went on a tour to Sumek Champé. Bat cave? What's that? The bat cave? <laughs> the, we, uh, we didn't go to the bat cave. No. But uh, there was a tour to it that we skipped. And then we got to be on at these. The pool. Beautiful. Yeah. Have you been? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we got really lucky when we went. It was early in the morning. Um, no one was there. And we didn't do the cave tour, so we just walked ahead and got there and pretty much had the place to ourselves. Nice. Um, then by by the time we left at like noon, it was it was pretty packed. Yeah. Wow. Um, so. I have, I have a no. Oh, baby. What kind of um, animal? That's cool. Oh. What kind of animals did you see? Can I pause it? Yeah. I'm sorry, what? Um, what kind of animals did you see? Uh, well, it was dependent on where we were. When in Guatemala, there was definitely howling some, monkeys. The howling monkeys were tapirs. insane. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of the tapirs were like uh the raccoons down there yeah right because they you would just see them everywhere in people's garbage etc and then the swinging monkeys which were really cute until they threw their feces at you <laughs> then less cute that's less cute Very yeah nice. less cute <laughs> um but we didn't see any snakes or anything like that no, we didn't. Some tree frogs. The the ants that we saw, I can't remember what they were called, but they would carry these leaves on their backs that were probably like three times bigger than them, and then you would just see trails of them. We I think we have video of it somewhere, but yeah. that was pretty cool. Um. So this is Tikal. This is Tikal. Yeah. So these ruins were also fairly close to Flores. Um, and so, yeah, this is Tikal. Which if you've been to Sioux, Mac Champagne, I, have you been to Tikal as well? Uh-huh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So in Tikal, a uh, little fact, this was like a thriving city, essentially, from like 200 to 900 AD, just to put things into perspective. Yeah what they managed to produce at that point is pretty impressive. And now we're going back to Mexico and our trip is over. And, um, well, not completely over. We stayed in Playa del Carmen for a couple more nights. And then Cancun. Well, no, we just flew out of Cancun. Out of Cancun. But yeah, so this is back in Playa del Carmen. And after our trip of traveling and being everywhere, uh, it was kind of it was kind of hard going back to Playa del Carmen and Cancun. It was just incredibly touristy. Um, so funny story here. But yeah, so our last night, um, 
So we went from Playa del Carmen up to Cancun um, to head to the airport and head out. And we were in Cancun and there was a diamond heist on the main drag in Cancun um, that literally happened right in front of us. So these guys went into a jewelry store and threw some smoke bombs and smashed a bunch of cases and grabbed a bunch of jewelry and ran. And, uh, and yeah, so that all happened like right in front of us. Um, which is kind of scary and crazy. Um, so yeah, at that point we're, we were pretty ready to go home. Um, where, where were all the guys with the guns when that happened? Right, right. They weren't, I, I guess they weren't really around. They showed up very quickly after, but yeah, they, they kind of missed it. Um, and so there we are at the very end of the trip taking um, the bus from Cancun to the airport and looking as exhausted as we felt. Yeah, well, and we joked about it that that was probably the nicest bus we were on on the entire trip. There's air conditioning, nice big comfortable seats. Um, so that was so that was nice, but I will say, I mean, it's very humbling to uh, travel the way of people who live in Mexico. Yeah, I mean, we did, um, you know, lots of chicken buses, and we traveled around in, in combis a lot, which. To the best of my knowledge, it's it's pretty much just like a van or a large white van or a minivan that they would drive around the town um, and everyone pays like a fare to ride to wherever you're going next town. So they would just drive around town and just surf around town until they would fill the van before leaving to head to a destination. And then they would often pick up people along the way and just try to pack these vans with as many people as possible to make as much money as possible. So. I'm not exaggerating. When one point we're in a van and there's there's 14 people in this minivan, and I had a stranger's child on my lap for most of the ride. Um, and then in another combi we we're in that was packed with people, um, my compartment where I sat was against the door where the sliding door opens. Um, so yeah, so some of our travel days were, were kind of rough. And I think that was partly because we just wanted to budget as much as possible. We could have easily hopped on a shuttle or a bus. That um, was going directly to. Right, but we, um, you know, just trying to budget and also like make it as bench adventurous as possible. Getting there and, is half the fun. Right, so yeah. So our travel days were sometimes challenging, um, but yeah, some great, great memories and experiences that came with it. And we learned that we could travel together. Yeah. So. And I will say that out of the entire trip, we were never both upset at the same time. So whoever was upset, the other person was calm and calming that <laughs> other person down. It was right. Pretty, it was pretty great. Right. And uh, and like I said, we've done I think four or five other trips to Central America, like Costa Rica, Panama, Mexico. Um, and we've, you know, done everything from resorts to, to hostels to, you know, to this, to like, you know, doing, just traveling out of a backpack, winging it the entire way and mostly staying at hostels. I mean, the accommodations were anywhere from like 10 to $15 a night for the two of us. Um, so, so it was, we did this on, on an incredible budget for the amount of time that we were traveling and that we were there. And I mean, yeah, we did do a lot of we did some we work trade. Tent, then we probably could have done it for even less. Right. That was the only thing that we kind of wished we had brought um, was a tent, because then we could have, you know, slept on a beach or, or camped out in different places and not had to get a hostel. Um, but you know, for the most part, everything went went really well. Um, it was a, a smooth experience. And uh, how old were you guys at that point? Like late twenties or. 29, 30. Yeah, late 20s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, and we actually, like I said, we went back to Mexico two years ago and brought Isaiah um, and, and went to Tulum and traveled around. Um, obviously, much different, you know, traveling and accommodations than what we had done other trips, <laughs> uh, having a, a two year old with us. But, um, but no, ho no hostels. No hostels, no, no, and no, uh, no chicken buses or combis or anything like that. We um, didn't do a taxi though; that was scary. Yeah, yeah. So tuk tuk, lots of tuk tuks. Yeah, yeah, lots of tuk tuks. Which, 
you know, we were kind of concerned going into it. We're like, we don't have a car seat. How does this work? Do we need to be worried about that? And that's, that is not a concern for them down there. They load you in the tuk tuk and you are racing around, you know? Yeah. So, so it was a lot of fun for Isaiah. He still talks about it. He wants, he wants to go back to Mexico. Um, I don't know if he really remembers any of it, but he knows that he went there and yeah. wants to go back. Mm. Right. So I can close this. Okay. Uh, yeah. Great. Oops. Let's open it up to more questions. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. Um, oh, bummer. What happened? Oh, uh, nothing. Okay. <laughs> so I heard briefly that you you had different kinds of vacations. Where would this Where would this land? On um, probably on the more adventurous end just seeing yeah adventurous yeah uh well adventurous pleasurable budget it was very pleasurable okay. and it was also um we like we did a lot of work on this track but we also did a lot of like laying on the beach and walking around and exploring and that was what made it so special and having like locals be like oh check this place out and that's how we got to it and particularly in Mexico when we were more strapped for cash like I re remember one taxi cab driver being like everything's free in Mexico hop in and he didn't and then when, I don't know how much Ben told you about tobacco key but when we were there we were told one price and then and then it was not that price and the captain that brought us out there ended up taking us out to go snorkeling and then caught us two fish and like gutted them for us for our dinner and and like bought us some beer and he was like here you guys just enjoy and there, there is moments like that that make you really appreciate what I'm, I mean other countries and their generosity what little they have they want to share it's great yeah nice, nice. yeah wow. any other questions <laughs> you both did a good job of describing all the pieces of your trip and the photos that went with it were excellent and i think okay. a good sense of the whole range of the beauty of the beach to the small towns where the vegetables are sold on the street and yeah and um it, it was a very good presentation thank you yeah. thank you <laughs> glad you enjoyed that tell me again how long was it the, uh, the... <laughs> we were gone for 55 days 55 days yeah so almost almost two months almost two months yeah. excellent okay. oh wow i need i loved looking at those pictures Rather than looking at you outside. get some vitamin C. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. So where where is your next trip gonna be with oh. Isaiah? I don't know. Well, um, now we actually, have Oliver too. Yeah, we have Oliver as well. Oh. So we've been talking about um, before Isaiah was born. We did a big lap around our country. Uh, oh. Drove it was like nine thousand miles total that we did, yeah. where he's kind of zigzagged around the country and went out west. And did that. We've been talking about doing that again with Isaiah and Oliver, um, or at least maybe at least show them where we met. Yeah, go out to the West Coast and travel um, from like Seattle to San Diego or something like that, maybe. Um, but we still talk about Mexico, um, especially this time of the year. You know, <laughs> and and Mexico is easy. I shouldn't, I mean, no, nothing is easy right, right now, but. It's usually pretty affordable to fly to Cancun. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you can travel from there and kind of go wherever. So, but we'll see. It's, uh, yeah. we definitely look forward to when we can travel again and yeah. take on the challenge of traveling with, with two little ones. <laughs> <laughs> Which will make nothing easy ever again. <laughs> No, but those experiences when the, when the kids are a little older and can soak in everything that they're learning uh, every day traveling with you, it's just invaluable. It's a fantastic yeah. thing to do with kids. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, we it's, it's to awesome to hear it. Isaiah still talk about Mexico. Um, 
okay? So, yeah. Hmm. Now, what do you guys do for work? Does your work give you flexibility to work from home or work from anywhere, or are your jobs such that you need to be somewhere to do them? Uh, so I, I lobster in the summer, and then I'm um, self-employed, carpenter, painter, caretaker. Um, so yeah, so the winters- You can make your own schedule fun. somewhat. Yeah, yeah, winters are fairly flexible um, and have allowed us in the past to kind of travel during the winters. And I am also seasonally a gardener. And uh, the years that I taught, we stayed put and- now that I'm momming, that's kind of all I'm doing right now. Not, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you in person once the summer season comes. We live up near Durkee Store, and we'll be on the lookout to say hello to you in person. Nice. Okay. Nice. We'll keep our eyes peeled for you guys as well. <laughs> So the Slawsons um, volunteer at the uh, at the library and the book sale, and Colleen, I don't know if people heard that at the beginning, so, and we all kind of know each other. Kathy, did anybody know um, Mom, Kathy, Dove? I knew who she was. I didn't really know her as a person. I mean, I could say hi to her, but yeah. Oh, okay. I have a yeah. physical picture of her in my mind. Yep, I do too. They, um, their brother, um, so Ben's brother, John, was dating a girl at Kelmscott Farm, which is why we came to Maine. And so John, um, Islesboro, and, um, and then, they uh, brought us dinner when we had moved in and it was three oh, nice. little tiny, tiny kids. This much snow, the snow was taller than all of my kids put together. And your mom and John with his dreads came <laughs> over and brought us dinner. It was the best thing. It was just like, that was 20 years ago and I'm still grateful. Wow, cool. Mm -hmm. It's over. It's well, thank you, Colleen and Ben. Yeah, thank you guys. Enjoyed it. It was fun. Thank you very, very much. much. Yeah. Very, Thanks for tuning in. From this gray, drizzly day. Yes. Right? Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. You guys have. Oh, okay. Thank you guys so much. Bye.